Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to the channel. Taylor coming back at you. We're stepping back a long time in my gaming career. Probably 15 years since I've played this game. We're in EverQuest, the very first EverQuest. This is probably the very first uh, MMO or... Well, I would say, yeah, MMO that went into like an actual 3D world. So I downloaded it again. I uh, logged into my old account and lo and behold, it was there still. I have my level 85 characters and a whole bunch of expansions. Interesting, I'm only behind by about two expansions. So, I mean, if I was to put this on my channel, I'd probably grab those two other ex expansions. But I'm starting a brand new character and I'm just going to see what they did over the years that I've been gone, right? Because the reason I stopped playing is because I've been working so hard. Um, so don't really have time to play games, but now I've got a little more time in my life. And I really am having fun with the channel and uh, talking to people, so it's really cool. I really like the genre. The MMO uh, communities are pretty cool. Um, and they're pretty cool games. So EverQuest, I don't think it's ever going to die. It doesn't seem to be slowing down. So you look at all the different races that you can have. There's 12 different races and they all have different uh, classes and professions that they can do. Um, every single race, um, from what I remember, can, can craft. Um, some can't craft certain things and others can craft certain things. So um, it's kind of really interesting how they did it. Like. Um, the, the name EverQuest always kind of harkens to me like there's a lot of quests There's a lot to do in this game, but it's called EverQuest because I mean everything you do in this game Even picking up your character is a bit of a quest. There's always a little bit of work to it a little bit of study and um, A whole bunch to look at now. This is one of the new characters classes Races in the game. It's kind of like half dragon half human. I'm going to try that out later on but I think I'm going to go into a Dark Elf because that's what I'm the most familiar with. And we'll have a smoother running video today. Humans are awesome. But I love Dark Elves. And um, Shadow Knights and Warriors is what I was pretty good at. So I think I'll pick the easiest one that would probably be a Warrior. <laughs> um, just because like the game is just so um, deep. Um, it's just crazy. Like I don't want to fumble around in this video and stumble all over the place. Want to have a nice smooth running video for you guys. Um, I don't know if many of you guys would want to play this game if you've never played it. Um, it's a bit old now, like for the visuals. But the rumor is out that somebody picked it up. Sorry, I'm blowing a f blowing this fruit fly away from me. Um, so somebody picked these games up for about 150 million dollars. So they picked up the entire EverQuest franchise. That would be EverQuest and EverQuest 2 and everything that went along with it. And I guess the goal is is to um, fix up EverQuest 2 a little bit and then to completely rebuild EverQuest 1. Now I haven't got total confirmation on this. There's a few people that worked up and telling me this stuff and they're heavy 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 into the MMOs and two of them have like monster monster big channels like we're talking into the millions of subscribers and I guess they would know because they get to talk to some of these guys so that would be cool because if this game ever did get a complete modern facelift and redo um, and some of the bugs and some of the missions fixed and some of the campaigns fixed up holy smokes man this would probably be the MMO of the century. I'm not kind of, I'm not fooling you because it is just so incredibly big. Like there's just so much to do. It is, really is a career this game. And when I stopped playing it, they were just got to level 85 was the maximum. So that was maybe not quite 15 years ago, probably 10 years ago maybe maybe a bit more but I haven't been in this game for a heck of a long time so it's kind of like a relearning and revisiting I did log in and take a look at my other characters they're sitting there everything's just like it was when I left it so we will check out those guys uh, later on but right now we're just gonna use this guy we're gonna have to go with a randomized name because there's so many people that have played this game that to get a name like this is like I have a book Okay, it says that another character has that name. Um, probably because it's my character, right? Um, I write science fiction books and I'll, I'll show you some stuff later on. But uh, like some of these names that I pick out and write down, they're out of my book series. So anyways, we're just going to do a random name and see 
what um, happens here. I'm just gonna throw this in to see if there's any kind of filter for uh, like profanities and stuff and yeah it's not gonna take it. <laughs> Anyways we're just having some fun here but um, we're gonna grab some weird name and I'm not gonna like get really picky and we're gonna jump right into the game here. Um, so if you watch the bar underneath as they're loading stuff, you can write anything in this game engine. Like, you can do this with lots of game engines, too. Watch some of the stuff that they write inside the bar down there, the loading bar. Um, some of it's pretty funny. Some of it's kind of uh, weird, quirky. Um, but they're game designers, right? They're nerds. I mean, their sense of humor is a little bit off at times. Um, I'm a game designer, and I still have a pretty solid sense of humor. Okay. The kobolds of the glooming deep dig far below the surface of Norath, greedy for treasure and the dark secrets of the depths that recklessly expand their slave raids forwards nearby settlements, and you got caught. Many have already been captured, few have escaped, fearing further reproach of the glooming deep raiding parties. Wow, so this is all new to me, man. I've never seen this. Your kindred have chosen you to journey to your home city and deliver a plea for help. As the gods would have it, you are captured long before you reach the capital, alone and far from home. Son of a bitch! You find yourself beneath the lash of the glooming deep kobolds. Co kobolds, whatever way you want to say it. Uh, you are restless, relentlessly questioned about the note you are carrying, regardless of your answers. The kobolds pummel you between interrogations as the hours pass. Hope of survival fades. Soon you slip into unconsciousness. You know, I, I must have quit just before this came. This is all new to me, man. I've never seen this before. So, um, what the hell's going on? We're going to find out here. So, uh, EverQuest, did you know? Missing some spells, head to the plane of knowledge. Oh, okay, so it's like a tutorial zone. A newbie zone. Actually, they needed this. Um, they needed this because as people stayed in the game and got higher and higher levels and more and more involved in their guilds, the new people had a hard time because like veterans didn't have really time it wasn't like they were being mean or nothing it was just like they just didn't really have a lot of time because every quest like demands like all of your attention all of your play time and um you get pretty deep into the hole and i mean i mean it's you know the rabbit hole is pretty deep with this um game so this is really cool it gave everybody kind of um you know Let's see what it does, but it looks to me it's like some kind of a tutorial. And so there's a bit of a storyline behind it too. So that's pretty cool. So Arius, let's see what he wants me to do. He wants me to go and kill somebody. Right off the bat. So there's a lot of reading. All these boxes are popping up. I don't think I'll read them. I think I'm just gonna like scan over them real quick and just grab main points and hopefully I do it right. Um Docking the boxes has always been like my pet peeve with this game um, And it's actually shouldn't be a pet peeve because it is nice to custom dock your UI um, Just to set it anywhere you want and to go wherever you want with it your keystrokes and the way you move your mouse around and everything Yeah, you get used to the pattern when you're in raids. You need to be like that um, so He says hey you almost died, man. Good thing I had some bandages and kept you alive. Um, we gotta get out of here. We're gonna start the revolt, basically. Okay, so we got ourselves a quest right off the bat. So let's go see about taking out this guy. There's your quest box. That hasn't changed. That's pretty cool. Um, one thing about EverQuest, like, it can get overwhelming because everything's popping up and there's a lot of things to look for. Uh, basically, it's EverQuest. It's it sometimes can be a quest even popping up a mission box <laughs> if you're new to the game. Um, getting around the map. That's one thing I found was really hard. Everything's zoned, and so the zones are all connected in a certain way. So if you needed to get someplace to get an ingredient for something that you were beating, making, let's say you're crafting. I mean, you you may have to do eight zones, right? And you have to know know the way to get there. 
so yeah it was kind of an old all-nighter trying to get there and then you would have to you would once you were there you could just you know hang out get what you want and grind so let's take a look at this so we're, we're way underground this guy's following me he's way tougher than me why isn't he doing this mission okay so this tells me the things that I need to accomplish I wonder if it works even was that a guillotine was that a guillotine they got a torture thing here torch oh there's that guy I guess we're supposed to kill this guy so I got a sword already wow where did I get a sword Arius must have given it to me okay um yeah I gotta dock a, a few things here so let's kill this guy Of course it wants me to pay for the full version okay I got the key okay so now what do I do with the key I give it to the big guy here this is how small uh, elves are right so I give it to this guy and I guess this gets us out of here to the revolt area there you go did I just pick up a level already that sure isn't like old overquest <laughs> old old everquest excuse me holy crap in the old days man like that was hours worth of work to get to level two okay um so i probably will spend a little bit of time maybe go to level eight or nine in this newbie area because it looks kind of like it's fun uh pick up a bunch of money which is really hard to get in this game um well it used to be when i played it um having like 40 or 50 pp was like a massive deal back in the day People were actually buying money from uh, offline marketers. And I think they, they found a way to get around that. So we got to do some more stuff with this guy. Um, a lot of reading. Okay, so when you get into the older MMOs, um, you're gonna if you're a bad reader, you're going to get good at reading. Okay, you're going to get really good at reading because you're going to be doing a lot of reading with a lot of the older MMOs, which is good for you believe me and then you'll learn to um, speed read and pick up the main points and you get the gist of what's going on and as you're running along you can always refer back to the the notes um, back in the old days um, we used to screenshot them and keep them popping them up and down okay so weapons so you're supposed to do something with this guy okay so this guy will enhance your weapons fix them up for you um, so we grab that and how you give somebody something you just click on them with the item and you say give and it comes back and it's been enhanced hey I fixed up your sword go kill something my son and enjoy every swing of the razor edge okay um, okay now what do I do read some more shit oh okay yep this box still pops up okay I starting to come back it's starting to come back to me um, how do I say my name? Ain Levin? Ain Lavin? Armor missions. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the most important missions that you need to do right away is your armor. Um, you need to do armor. Big time. Um, weapons kind of come along as you're playing. And um, I heard that now they have missionaries. So, uh, mercenaries. Sorry, not missionaries, but mercenaries. Like, so you can get an NPC to help you along through the game. You know why they probably did that was because it's hard for the new people and you know like it's just hard because the guilds are hard to get into probably by now because the guilds will only want really skilled people because that's really kind of how hard the game is but if you could get into your own guild and then pick up like-minded people along your travels and that's how EverQuest works is you kind of go out and you find people that are doing the same thing as you, new in the game kind of figuring it out um, and all that kind of stuff and you build your own guild that's how you do it right there maps Zen Zenaida I like kinda like that name okay so you click that the maps still archaic and cavemanish as hell and that is still in the game look at that cool man so you just follow that and it takes you to where you gotta go we'll pick a mushroom and give it back to the little dark elf and that mission is over. This is kind of cool how they did this because everybody's sort of picking up on every little aspect of the game. There's trade skill guys over there across the river I saw. So we'll have to check those out in another video maybe. Uh, maybe I'll do it offline and then as you guys watch. If I do this into a, a, a series, 
um, you guys will see how to do crafting and stuff because I'll start three or four characters of different kinds because when it comes to crafting and gathering different guys make different things that you really need like um, there's certain uh, classes that can only craft certain things and so it's kind of um, good to get a few characters going I don't know if you have a common bank we always wanted a common bank but back in the day how I used to do things and this guy just gave me a buff and uh, I can't really handle spells but there's a tome there that if I click on that it will give me a skill I don't even know what skill it gave me but that's okay we don't need to know that because we can pop up the skill thing there's probably two or three in there that are worth more and more useful than that skill um, so how we used to transfer things from one character to another on our account was we would find a hiding spot drop the bag full of stuff that you had log out then log in as quick as you could could and you had to make sure that the character that you were logging back in was right at that secret spot and you looked around like a son of a bitch all around you to make sure nobody was spying on you because people would do that they'd follow a person and they would spy on them and uh, steal their shit before they could log in um, so I don't know if they put a lockout on that like there's a certain timer before you can grab something that's been dropped on the ground but I highly doubt it because when it's dropped on the ground fair game right so right now we're making a hotkey and so you can make a hotkey and stick it on your um, bar and there's a skill that you can do right there so yeah a lot of things haven't changed it's pretty much the same but this new newbie area is kind of cool I, I back in like hmm, 2000 1997 1998 around that area when I first started playing this game we sure could have used something like this because what they used to do is you used to get into the game and it, you just like went in cold you know, it was walking into a, a, a cold, dark room, right? And you had to feel your way around. That's really what it was like with EverQuest. And, and like everybody, you really had to be decent to other people because you really needed them. And um, you had to be friendly. <laughs> you had to be, you know, you didn't kill steel. You didn't, you know, come in right at the when the guy's got three percent left and bomb his kill and then take his loot. You just there's people that did that, but you just kind of, you know, after a bit, your your name got out there and people were like, "This guy's a dick," and like after a while, you know, got kind of tough, you know, to get help from anybody. So you back in the day, that's how it was, right? Like you had to really rely on each other, like um. In Nariac, along the trail, there's a log, and everybody would go to that log, and that's where you would go to um, get help. So you would sit on the log, and you would put, send out a shout, say, hey, I'm on the log in Nariac, and everybody would come there from everywhere, right? This is back when the highest you could go was level 50. And I'm sort of just playing along and just telling you my, my history in this game. So this, you'd send out a tell, like, hey, I need uh, Caleb's Flaming Sword of Doom, right? So, like, I don't know how to finish the quest. So, could somebody please come heal me while I finish the quest? And, you know, in about an hour, you'd have, like, three or four guys show up at the log and say, yeah, I'll help you out with the quest. I'll keep you going. And so, you'd go and you get your sword. That's how cool the community was, right? Like, you don't see that as much anymore. But, I don't know what it's like in EverQuest, but in other games, um... I just you don't really see that as much the world has gotten a little colder and unfortunately so is a lot of the, the communities right but good old EverQuest it is really awesome to see EverQuest still trucking right along when I went into it there's still a pile of uh, servers it's not as many as back in the day but still there's a lot of servers and I'm telling you that's an indication you know people will say oh yeah you could have a lot of servers but there's hardly any population in each server well you know you gotta understand how much it, money it costs to run those servers for each server you know there's a certain cost to each server so it has to be justified so the combined servers well I've, my buddy has played EverQuest as long as me he has never stopped playing I think he has his maximum amount of characters on every single server except the PvP server I loved 
the PvP server. The PvP server was a hoot because it was so dangerous. It was so incredibly um, nerve-wracking to be on that server. <laughs> it was like true adventure, right? But I think he was telling me that um, they've done a lot of uh, uh, one or two roles of combining servers. So I don't know. We'll have to see. You guys that know this game really well, you'll give a look, give, put down more information down below because I'm talking from my experiences of many, many years ago in EverQuest. And um, now EverQuest is up over a hundred levels. That's like crazy, man. Um, eh, a lot. You know, like I let my wife play this game and that's probably where all the expansions came because she got right into it and played the hell out of it up to when we started having kids so then she couldn't so much right so uh, I've only down by two expansions I haven't even got into oh I don't know I'm probably up to maybe the third expansion in my time at EverQuest when I left EverQuest I was level 65 was the highest you could go um, I came back for a short while and leveled up to 85 and that's as far as I could go. Now I see that you can just go straight to 85, right? So that's how long ago I, I played. So we got ourselves a mission. We got to go and do something here. Talk to this cowboy. Um, these guys are cool, man. They're fun to play. Um, and you get your mission and there's a whole slew of things that you got to do. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of bumble along through this because it's like I haven't been in here for a long time. A lot of things are, are have changed and it's unbelievable how much it's changed. Um, people have been stayed in it and haven't gone anywhere. They would say, well, it didn't really seem like it changed maybe as much as what I'm seeing, right? It's just my experience, right? Um, I guess once you get hit by a Mack truck once the second time it's not so bad. But I mean, that's just kind of how it is. So we're going to kill these rats. We're going to kill a number of rats. And um, I really want to look into this mercenary thing. Um, because that would be sure handy to have a healer with you all the time. And you probably got to pay them a certain amount of money every couple of hours. The way EverQuest would work. I can't see them letting you off the hook <laughs> with a free mercenary. You know what I mean, it's, it's made to make you work at the game. So another rat. Let's whack this guy. And um, oops. I got to uh, set my UI up a little bit here. Um, but yeah, the, the UI is old and all that stuff, but it's still, it's, it, you know, the most important thing is, is the gameplay. It's not like what it looks like, it's the gameplay. Although for a lot of people, I guess it would be, it has to look a certain way for them to play it. So, I mean, I'm not like that. I just look at the actual gameplay. I mean, I've got Elder Scrolls uh, 1 or two I got them both and they're coming on the channel and if you want to see old old graphics <laughs> that's stinking old graphics man so that's coming on there um, I got a whole pile of Elder Scrolls and stuff like that so I mean I like the really old stuff because it was hard um, it was it was um, different okay so we're doing pretty good we're going through all of these um, this quest here so I'm gonna go until I get all my armor all my armor and a, and a mercenary is as, as long as I'm gonna play the game and then we'll log off and you guys tell me what you think okay like if you want me to do more just say more um, anybody that's um, new to the channel you're welcome man um, thanks for subscribing giving me a chance I'll try to keep it interesting um, I've kind of like moved away from a couple of games that was playing quite a bit on the game just because they don't seem to be very popular or at least they aren't for me um, there is one game that I don't get very many views on, but I like it a lot, so I probably will keep doing it, and that's Scum. But there's a couple of others I don't seem to get a lot of support for that I'm going to have to go by the wayside. Um, my big thing is MMOs. I love MMOs. At work, I build, I build uh, first-person shooters, and we're into the biggest one in the world is where I work. Okay, I can't really say. I've got contracts against me and things like that that seal my lips, but... Yeah, it's not really MMO stuff, but it's uh, it's pretty crazy and pretty historical game in itself, right? It's been around as long as almost as long as EverQuest, and we just keep making new additions to it. The thing about EverQuest, 
is that when I first started playing video games, the very first video game I ever played was EverQuest. And it's because I had a landscaping company and this guy used to work for me and he'd come to work and he was always so damn tired and I was like why are you always tired man like we got lots of work to do dude um, and he's like well it's just this game I was I had to stay on because we were trying to get this suit certain I a certain drop from this certain thing and he was talking about raids and I never even freaking even had a clue even how to turn on a computer back then right so one day I was dropping him off, he goes, hey, you want to come see my little character? Because like for two weeks he's telling me about this gnome. He's got a gnome and he's running around doing all this stuff and he's telling me how he's animated and everything. So I said, fine. He said, I'll, I'll come in, man. So he gave me a beer and I'm sitting there. And um, what hooked me right away was the theme song of EverQuest and the artwork. The original artwork that came up was just captivating for a guy like me who had never been... Um, near a computer didn't know anything about a computer and um, it was beyond cool okay so now we'll go kill a bunch more rats but yeah it was pretty cool back then because you know you come from just being basically a landscaper into a video game and uh, I watched him for four or five hours and then uh, by that weekend I had a computer and um, I had a box set see back then you didn't download the games you had to go buy them and the guy that built the computer he got me uh, EverQuest installed on the game and so I went and started my account and got everything going and that was my very first uh, experience with video games, was this game right here. Um, and it um, just graduated from one thing to another thing, and before you knew it, I was uh, learning how to build video games in school again, and became a game designer, working on some of the biggest games that we've ever seen. So it all started right here for me, right here in this game. So. That's why I'll always come back to EverQuest. I mean, sometimes I'll leave for a really long time, but you eventually end up back at home. You know, it's always full circle. Um, I think it would be really cool if this game did get a complete upgrade to modern standards. I mean, as far as gameplay is concerned and depth and immersiveness and just everything that you can do in the game, you can't really beat EverQuest. I mean, it's pretty hard to. I mean, there's World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is another old game. It's been around for a long time and it's pretty huge too. But with EverQuest, it was just, I don't know, I think it was because it was the very first one that put people together and got them communicating. Like, I mean, the thing that really got me back in the day before I even played with a computer was watching that guy that worked for me um, meet up with somebody else to um, give him a sword and to give him some coin um, on some kind of a deal that he hatched up and I said well where is this guy and he says I don't know he's over in Japan somewhere and that just like blew my mind that these two people from two different continents were communicating having a super great time and making some kind of a deal in real time so anyways um, after I saw that I was hooked and so I still have my very first character and I will show you to show her to you on the uh, server she's a dark elf warrior uh, female I think she's level 84 I don't think I quite made it to level 85 so yeah that's the impact that um, EverQuest had for me it not only started a gaming career and a whole way of um, entertaining myself that would last for the rest of my life it also gave me a look into a brand new life as far as a real career and through through the gaming industry I got to meet my wife and um, and it just went from there we got kids and here we are 
And now I have a YouTube channel and we're back on YouTube channel with EverQuest. So how many games can really say that? Not a lot. Not very many games can really wear that cap, um, that EverQuest um, does. And you know, like the Sony series, Sony came in, took it over, and um, EverQuest has been around. It's been handed around a little bit, and I'm hoping now that it's in good hands. Um, rumor is that the company that is owning it right now is kind of like really involved with Amazon so if Amazon has it that's um, a lot of money to be able to take care of this game and um, well, well we'll see what happens with it in one way or another one form or another this game will always exist in the world either it'll be through a big corporation or it'll be a group of fans that will put up servers and keep it running forever so it will never go away and that's a good thing okay so what in the heck am I doing I've been killing rats and I'm digging out these piles okay so we're working on a couple of quests here and we have a number of things that we have to do before we return into the quest interesting thing is, is when I first started playing every quest I never followed the quests I think I only played out of all the quests that are in the game maybe 20 of them I just followed my friends around uh, on their quests <laughs> and um, I just ground like I just would see something and I would go and fight it if it was green or white yellow you know dark blue I would go and do it right I didn't really care about quests and things like that I was just so fascinated by it just exploring the world running all over the place and just finding new places to go see and fight and my friends would drag me around because they were into the quests and stuff and the big long I would just sort of follow them along because I was a tank and I would just do what they told me to do I never really followed the quests like I'll show you too when we log in I'll show you um, we'll look at my main character the very first character I ever made I still have her and you look at her quest log and there's like hardly any of them done um, all she did was just tank and we'd go into raids and I would just tank with my friends I would just do what I was told <laughs> to do um, and it's it was still super fun and it was still super immersive and it was still like a real sense of um, camaraderie and friendships that I made that I still have today like I have three or four people in Sweden that I've been buddies with for over 20 years because of this game that's incredible right and then through another game I met some other guys in Sweden and Finland and Denmark and I have friends all over the world because of online games it's really an incredible phenomenon if you think about it so I'm supposed to get some arrows I got an arrow look at that I wonder how big this area is like how much uh, how far I can level on down here in this uh, prison camp I mean I might I might play it all the way through if it's making me good money because this is making me I could see me making pretty decent money down here I don't know what the level cap would be for down here in a newbie area So, okay, let's go turn it in. So, there you go, you got a little bit of a history of what got me into games and got me building games.
I even forget. I totally forget how many characters I have spread out through the servers because you would basically go along in your life and, you know, I would meet somebody at a game show or something. They're like, oh, I'm on this server. You should come over to my server and check and hang out. So I would go over there, hang out with these people for like a year or two, and then um, end up meeting somebody else and go over to that server and start another character and get working with them. And uh, I mean, I think I have characters spread out across seven servers, probably. So I'll have to go through and them all and see exactly what I have. Sometimes I would just make a character just to hang out for a weekend with somebody, get up to level 20 and never play the character again. Just hanging out with somebody, you know? So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, done. And we got a quiver. So that's pretty cool. You get a quiver for doing that. And quivers are cool because you added four more slots to your storage. Now, later on, you will be able to get these bags and these boxes that have like, I don't know, 14, 15 slots in them. Maybe some are even higher. And you put them in your, your normal slots and after a while you got a like a hundred a hundred slots you know hundred inventory slots so it's pretty good and especially when you're working on stackables now that's how you start to accumulate like making big money because this game gets expensive like some of the swords and some of the armors back in my day were big bucks I can't even imagine what they would cost now to buy from player vendors in the game. Oops, my keyboard got stuck. Okay, unstuck it. I got one of these funky keyboards, like if you just push the, the button too many times. It's meant to stop carpal tunnel. It's meant for MMOs. So when you're running for long distances, you just tap the W key three times, tap, 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 and it'll just keep running. And sometimes uh, I I tap it three times, and then it just does that. We'll do a circle. It'll do that with like cornering, going backwards, going forwards. It's really irritating. Trying to grind up some of these um, these spiderling. Um... Okay, so there's three types of webs that you need, I think, to get the all the armors. So that's what I'm doing. I want to get myself armored up, so I'm just sort of hitting these spiders. Grab that armor. Now this box here that keeps popping down, that wasn't around back in the old days, and none of the, um, well it was just new I think. So I'm just sort of trying to remember how everything works, trying to pick up the uh, quests and stuff, quest box. Like I said, everything's a stinking quest in this bloody game, even just finding the quest journal.
Okay, so there's a, quite a few things that have changed in this game. And I think back in the day, this is exactly the reason why I didn't like follow quests. Because I just got so lost in the UI. It was just like, wow. You know, it just was like, you know. Went from mowing lawns to playing video games to going back to school, learning how to be a programmer, then learning how to build objects in 3D Max. Back then it wasn't called 3D Max. Um, and, uh, I mean, it was unbelievable, you know. And then working on PlayStation 1 and 2 games. Like, what a change, you know, from mowing somebody's lawn and throwing grass seed around to doing that <laughs> and riding on a lawnmower anyways it's all been a great experience it's been a good life and I'm gonna be doing it for probably 20 more years 30 more years in fact my contract is coming up for renewal and I don't think I will renew I think I want to go on my own and build something with my own my own brand on it okay let's see if we can get some armor going here will you take my no, she didn't want it. It's the wrong one. Okay, well, we'll just go sell it, I guess. It's like... There's two types of um, webs that she takes. I think it's the cocoon webs and uh, I'm not sure which the other one is. Spiraling web, maybe? I don't know. Whoever thought of this music made it, like, pretty cool for the vendor. And that thing down there, that ration, that's actually food. Yes, you have to keep your character fed with uh, drinks and, fru and food. Or it gets too thirsty and too hungry and doesn't perform well. And if you don't feed him or dr give him water or a drink of something, he will die. So, see if you'll take this one. Okay, I did get some stuff. I don't need it, so I could probably just sell. Oh, I did. Look at that. Okay, so there's uh, two kinds of silk. So we'll remember that. My boots look very stylish. That looks cool. And my new pants. So we'll get all the armor, and then I'll look into this mercenary thing. Um, like I said before, my wife played my account for a long time, so I would suspect that my other characters probably have mercenaries. Because she only stopped playing, I would say, mm, three or four years ago. When the kids started coming along, so... Yeah, she would probably would have loaded them right up. Back into the cave tunnels. I'm gonna have to give up on this because I'm lousy at trying to figure this out right now. It keeps... I don't know why I keep hitting that same button, but whatever. Just leave one up, leave them both up. But they always close on me for some reason. Okay, let's just leave this like this and see what this does now. Boy, somebody's been in here. So these are 
We need to get four four of these to finish off my armor. This was actually a quest um, way back in the day. This was actually a quest that you could do. So they've actually just ported a really old quest into this newbie thing here. And hybrided it and hooked it onto a bunch of other stuff. Which is fine because everybody's moving to, in, uh, to level 85 or 100 like right off the bat, right? So. So if I did play EverQuest again, I would play it from the bottom all the way to the top, level by level by level by level. Because there's so many cool things and quests and stories um, to, you know, entertain yourself with inside the game. So I guess the trend is nowadays everybody wants to go to end game, start playing end game content, play those dungeons, fight those mobs. Uh, go after that gear and all that kind of stuff and hey, that's perfectly fine, right? It's, if that's how you want to play the game um, Other people just like raiding. They just like that raid That group fight thing going on um, But I'm more a type of guy who just wants to play all the way through the game and just experience the game The way it was made right the way it was originally intended to be played and I'll do that with Guild Wars too. I guess you could go to end. I don't know if you can like level right to one level. I know in um, World of Warcraft you can go to end game levels and stuff like that. Um, but I don't know if you can do that in Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 is another one where I won't do that. I'm just going to play it all the way through. Right, look at that. We got ourselves a piece of armor it just loaded on. So he's looking pretty stylish now. You take this and make something? Nope. She doesn't want that. I keep trying. <laughs> Okay, I gotta figure out how to do the mercenaries, so I'm going to stop recording. I'll come back when it comes down to that. Okay, I'll uh, be right back. Okay, mercenary time. We gotta go find the mercenary guy. Oh, ran right into him. Hey, I need a mercenary. So how does this work now? Okay, cool. Okay, so you have to rent her or him. You get a healer and a tank of uh, decent proficiency. You have passive mode and balanced mode. Balanced is when they would probably help you, right? I'm guessing. I'm hoping like hell. Oh, there she is. She's got a club too. My type of girl. Okay, so that's my mercenary. Fully armed and armored. And your mercenary probably see this is new to me so I would say the mercenary probably levels along with you is probably the same level as you are I hope anyways let's go give her a go so you have a whole switchboard just for her to suspend her dismiss her dismiss would be delete basically Cool stuff, man. Okay, let's see what we can go on here. Oh, look at my gear. See my new gear? I, uh, you weren't here with me, but I did, um, got some new gear. No. 
Okay, so I'm geared up pretty good here. Another thing I'm gonna show you later on is the dyeing system. So you can buy dyes and you can set the color if you don't like this blue color of your armor. That's one thing about um, EverQuest is all the weird and funky colors <laughs> that you can have for your gear. We're making some money off that uh, girl that makes the armors, I tell you. Made some, made a few bucks. Way back in the day, man, it would have taken a hell of a long time to make one platinum. Okay, so let's get rolling here. Is this mercenary with me? Okay, so now, this is how you set your dies. Now, like, I don't have any dies, but you can still go through the process if you want. I'll just kind of show you. So every piece of armor has a color code to it, and you can change it. And you have different, um, so I could make that a little lighter or darker than that is. That's just your default color. And there's variables that you can add in. And uh, you can totally color yourself up really nice. And some of the people in this um, game look pretty stinking stylish. There you go. I'm all black. Now I haven't picked up any gloves or po um, bracers yet. But it looks pretty cool to do it like this. And that's it. Like back uh, a while back you used to be able to keep that box open and run around and you could have yourself like free die but nobody else could see that die right just you did so only you saw that color everybody else saw you as the blue color so dies are made by other characters uh, players in the game um, you can make your own dies it's not that hard to make the dies it's actually pretty easy crafting um, and you could just uh, yeah do that so we'll click that out and the camera goes back to where it was so I'm going to take this girl for a little run and um, maybe she'll even heal me she probably only heals me when I get down too low in my health so we'll go down and smack some spiders and see if I can take some damage and see if she heals me so back in the day we never had healers <laughs> we had healing potions um, vials of um, healing elixir dragon's blood or whatever or something like that I don't know anyways uh, or you had your buddy come along that would just heal you as you played okay let's see how this goes kill some spiders get some damage and if she doesn't heal me well I've decided to do a few more videos on this and you'll see her heal me Now, if I had a, not a healer, but a tank, it would probably jump in and start fighting for me. I wouldn't even have to fight. I like that. That would probably be pretty cool. Okay, I got a little bit of damage, but she hasn't done anything about healing me yet. Don't want to heal me yet? Okay. Well, I'm going to go park my character. My tune. And um, I'm going to catch up with you guys on the next one. 
okay you guys take care of yourselves out there thanks for watching my video um, new subscribers um, thanks for coming along uh, welcome to the channel I'll try to get some pretty cool videos up for you and some pretty cool games try to keep the quality up um, and yeah so you guys be careful out there in this crazy world don't let it get you stressed out okay everything will come out fine in the end and at the end of the day we'll all still pretty much be here anyways that's it that's all I got for you today I will see you on the next one bye for now